What's going on, Mr. Rap Nerd? If you're here because of the title, we are here to discuss is comic book movie fatigue a real thing? Now, this has been getting passed around a lot on all of the social medias. I've seen different outlets talk about it. And I figure I want to talk about it myself because I was always on that side of saying that comic book movie fatigue wasn't a real thing. But I can definitely say as of recently, I think I may have a touch of that. So I'm going to just take a few things that I've seen people who go against it say why it, it's not a thing and just put pump my outlook on it because I think there's something to be said here and there is a place that we can go from this point, right? So one of the arguments I've always seen when people say like come up with movie fatigue doesn't exist is because they'll say like, well, people still release horror movies all the time. They're not tired of those. People release dramas all the time and they're not tired of those. They're not tired of racing movies. They're not tired of action movies, blah, 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 right? See, here's the thing about that. When we talk about all these other genres of films, drama, horror, action, sci-fi, fantasy, adventure, these genres have been around for quite some time. The longevity of these genres is a thing because they've been around so long and they've been able to create subgenres of each of these genres to make different types of said genre. You know what I'm saying? Like with action, you have sci-fi action, you have action thriller, martial arts, espionage. Like there are many things under each of these genres. But the thing about comic book movies, and this is something I don't think a lot of people have thought about, if you could think right now in your memory, when is the first time you heard the term comic book movies used as a tag word for these films? If you don't know, I'm going to suggest that it was with the rising of the MCU. I feel like once the Avengers movie hit, that's when these films started getting classified as comic book movies. And from that point on, these films got placed in its own genre right now. I've seen it on podcasts before where somebody said, like, what's your favorite action movies? Not counting comic book movies. Like, they, 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 they take comic book movies outside of the genre now because of the space that's been created because of the MCU. Because if you think back prior to the Marvel Studios films, right, these movies were always put in that same category as, like, just action or fantasy films. And hell, some people just call them superhero films. But they were not specifically labeled as comic book movies because, one, back in the day, we didn't get these movies a lot. You know, we would get these movies once either a year or, or that's even pushing it. Maybe once every other year. Because if you think about, like, Spider-Man, right? The first one came out in 02. The second one came out in 04. That's a two-year hiatus. The next movie came out in 2007. Even with the first Blade movie coming out in 1998. The second one came out in 02. Back then, we didn't get comic book movies nearly as much as we get, we get them now. You know, now we're to a point where we get, at minimum, three a year. And that's a lot compared to how it used to be. So, I feel like ever since these started getting cranked out more and more, it definitely created its own lane. Not to mention the impact it's had on the box office. So, it's kind of like we have to put comic book movies in its own space, right? I say that to say, if we put the pin at 2012 as the start of coining comic book movies to now, the genre is still really, really young. We're only about 11 years in for this specific genre to be alive. I think once that decade hit, it's time for a revamping. And I feel like that's why a lot of these films have been feeling stale. That's why a lot of these films haven't been bringing in the box office like they used to. So I'm going to bring in another factor where I see people talk about in this moment right here. It's a good tie-in. I always see folks reference like, well, comic book movies aren't dead or, or fatigue isn't real because the Batman made $700. Spider-Man No Way Home made you know two, almost $2 billion. While true, Spider-Man and Batman are literally the most iconic superheroes of the world. Like, it, it just is what it is. When you compare box office numbers and all of the toys and everything, these two are the top dogs, most recognizable characters. So, regardless of what they do, when you release a movie to theaters with any of these characters, people are going to go to the theater to see them. It just is what it is. That doesn't count for all of the other superheroes that have happened. Like, you see Marvel, they just got their B-list characters popping because they, one, didn't have a choice. And they worked these characters for 10 years to get them to this place that we're at now. So with that being said, we're still on the evolution of making other characters be just as large as life as Batman and Spider-Man. We're not there yet, based off of the box office. I mean, we've seen a lot of the recent movies and how they've been doing. We got to get 
interest in these characters for people to sit their asses in seats. And this goes to another tie-in to the character standpoint. You know, some people will say, it's not fatigue, it's quality. And to that point, I, I do agree to a certain aspect of that, but not how some people may, may think it is. I, I, when people talk about quality, a lot of folks are referencing the movies being bad. And I don't necessarily think that. I think from what these companies have done within the last 10 years and us as audiences showing up and putting asses in seats, we have seen what we think is everything. You know, we've gone from small scale, street level superhero movies like Batman, like a Spider-Man, like a Daredevil, all the way to multiverse of madness type films where we're jumping from multiverse to multiverse, seeing different characters like we did in the new Doctor Strange film and like we're going to see in the Flash film to Thanos wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, throwing planets and moons, going back in time to fix things. We feel like we've seen it all because of how wide we stretched it. And in that regard, we have seen a lot. So seeing all these things has made us numb. You know, we've seen a lot of it. Like I always hear the sentiment with Black Adam, like this movie would have been good if it came back out in 2009. And what that really to me says is, it's not necessarily bad the way it's, it, you know, it, it, it did things, but we've seen this before. We've been down this road. We've seen the high flying action. We've seen the slow motion. We've seen people get super punched. We've seen gold armor. We've seen nanotechnology type aspects like we've seen in this movie. And now we're at a point where we have to reinvent ourselves. And when I say we, I'm talking about the companies. I don't know why I keep saying we. Because I feel like I'm a part of that community too. Or I'm, 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 I feel like I'm, I'm part as an audience member to tell the companies what they should be doing differently and how they should go about doing this stuff. Because I want to see comic book movies to continue to grow. And as I mentioned earlier, we got to reinvent and keep it fresh. And now it's time to branch out the same way all of the other genres have. You know, and I feel like the, the, the blueprint to follow, in my opinion, for comic book movies is the horror genre. I think that they're the closest when it comes to what you can do creatively. And that's no knock to nobody else, but I'm just talking about the, the, the fantastical slash out there ideology. Comic book movies are close to horror with that. And horror's been able to carve mad different genres, you know, supernatural, slashers, zombie films, virus films, psychological films demonic, apparently like all this stuff, right? So for comic books to continue to thrive, we have to start seeing stark differences in these films. Like we can no longer just lean on the slight subgenres that we do have. Because I feel like right now with comic book movies, the only somewhat subgenre we have is films are either family friendly and fun or they're serious slash mature. I feel like that's the only difference we have. And we're gonna have to start thinking outside of that and changing the subgenre of these comic book movies. And I think that's why the Batman was such a huge thing and people loved it and it talked about is because it took a huge step outside of the comic book genre, you know? The same way none of the movies did. Like, those films feel like crime thrillers, but they're still comic book movies because they're based around characters. With the Batman, it's literally a, a noir murder mystery. That's literally what it is, honestly. That's why it feels so much different. I'm not saying that we need more movies that are murder mysteries, but we need more comic book films that literally stick to a genre. Like in recent years, we still do not have a straight up horror comic book movie. We have movies that have elements of horror that have been released to theaters, but it's not like what we've seen with like Blade. Like those movies are straight up horror movies. The closest that we have gotten, and again, I'm talking about theatrical, this movie didn't get released to theaters, but is Werewolf by Night, the Marvel did. That shit was fantastic because it felt so different than what we've gotten. We need more bold swings like that. We, we need to balance the change. Like we, like we need more of these things. And I feel like the formula that's most popular, which I think, again, is the family fun aspect of it, is getting used because for so long, that was profitable. I think now audiences, our fans, are ready for way more than that. And that's why we're seeing the dipping of the box office. Shazam 2. So in my review, I really didn't say much about it because I, I, I just, it didn't move me anyway because it, it just didn't feel... It didn't feel special like these movies used to feel. You know what I mean? Like the CBMs have lost their, their their secret veil of special where we're all excited about it because we've done so much in these 10 years. We've seen a lot. So I think now it's time to amplify the creativity to really double down on crafting 
films that feel like a specific genre opposed to what we've been doing. That's the only way this genre is going to thrive and continue to thrive is if, we, if, if, if the creators go in trying to craft something that feels special. And that's not to say that the creators now don't do that, but I think they try, but the suits make them include certain things because, you know, for the past few years, this has been profitable, but it's the change of the guard, right? Like they want profits to remain and the biggest thing grow. You gotta let the creative side of it grow. Like it pains me as a comic book fan that I actually am feeling the fatigue because I haven't seen much of anything to move the needle. And that's kind of the issue with like, you know, especially with the with the, the age of technology and green screen. Let's bring things back down to being shot 100% on location. We forgot what that's like. Let's slow up the production on having so many movies out in one year and just go back to just two a year. Let the filmmakers and the people who work on these films have the time to make these things perfect. Like you look at, I look at a movie like Avatar, right? Not even a huge fan of either of the movies, but when you watch them, you can see the level of care in them. And that's why that movie is doing so well at the box office. If comic book movies did that with their movies, it could be in the same boat, but we're not seeing that same level of care. We're just not. You can tell by how the movies just look. You can tell how the movies are written. You can tell by the dialogue, how they all kind of sound and look and do the same exact things. If we keep that up, the genre is going to turn back to how it was in the early 2000s where people stopped caring and showing up because people are already starting to get like that. And I don't want to see the genre die because there are so many more good stories to be told. And that's just my take on it, man. So let me know in the comments what you think about superhero fatigue. How do you feel? Are you are you kind of feeling it? Do you think it's BS? Let me know in the comments and be respectful as always. Just my opinion and share my perspective. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Rap nerd productions, no capping, that's word to mommy.